Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Right now, it's time to take global stories making headlines in our national dailies. And joining us to review the papers is Chris Kende Wandu. He's a member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK. But he's joining us from Abuja this morning, the seat of power. Good morning, Mr. Chris. Always nice having you on the program. Good morning. Thanks for having me. How is Abuja today? I, I like the way you said the seat of power. The seat of, oh. We are connected, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Our Chris is in the, at the seat of power. <laughs> yeah, which I always find this morning. It's just that uh, there, are, there are a few, there are four queues all over the place. Oh, really? And that is, yes, I've been four queues in Abuja for some days now. Mm. And most of the police stations are not having uh, fuel. I don't know the reason for that. But I think that's it. We oh, get wow. that sorted out in this time. But for now, mm. Abuja is cool. I'm fine. Oh, that's nice. All right, let's go in straight into the papers. We're going to be starting with the punch this morning. And the major headline is something we just even kind of spoke about before we went on air. And it says 28 trillion Naira budget bruhaha. Mm -hmm. Parties demand 3.7 trillion Naira padding probe. Northern senators disown Ngigi. And then the writer is Ngigi insists on 3.7 trillion Naira allegations. Um, allegations senators, APC, PDP seek sanction and investigation. What do you think about this um, brouhaha as Punch has called it? Yes, the man's name is Ningi. Ningi. Uh, okay. So that, yes. Ningi, yes. I beg your pardon. Yes, Ningi. Ningi. Yes, Ningi. That is his name. And is a ranking senator uh, of the Senate. Mm. Um, well, I I don't know uh, what prompted that, uh, but if you follow the um, the press statement by uh, by the spokesperson of the president, uh, by uh, uh, Onanuga, a few days back, was that able to optimize that what was passed was not a 25 trillion budget um, that the president presented. Two point, um, I think two point five, yes, um, twenty five, um, twenty seven point five trillion, and the Senate or National Assembly, their wisdom has always added another one point two trillion. So everything now came to twenty eight point seven trillion naira budget. That was what was passed um, by the National Assembly, and that was uh, what was assented to by the President. So where um, uh, Senator Ningi is getting stone figures uh, is yet to be seen. Um, so, um, yesterday on uh, another forum, I was saying that I've not had Northern Senators debunking him because he claimed to be the chairman of Northern Senators Forum. So, he probably was speaking on behalf of Northern Senators. But now, they have come out to dis uh, disown him and say that he was lying, just like some other have said. But um, I don't do it, It's not even only that that is my issue. The issue for me is the way he has tried to. Uh, Bring some ethnicity into the mix um, by claiming that um, the president has neglected the north. The president has not done anything about the uh, Mambila Plateau power project. That the president has not done anything about the Jakuta State Company, and um, that uh, they are going to talk to the president about that how he has rejected, neglected the north. And that question I ask. Let him point at one project that the president has also executed within these nine months in the south. So uh, this is not about ethnicity. If he has any genuine complaint and have it, then let him bring it to the full. But when it comes to pardon, this is not uh, this is no news. Uh, you and I know that uh, pardon has become part of the um, uh, national assembly. They've done this in the past several years, and there have been uh, you are cry over this. But whether he has any substantial. Uh, uh, any evidence um, to prove his point is just to be seen. So let him put it before the public debate. The president has replied and said that what was passed and signed by the president was 28.7 trillion naira 2024 budget and not the 25, according to what he said. He said it was 25 that was signed and that it has padded by um, another 3, 3 trillion. But let's see how this pans today. Uh, we are hearing some news from the National Assembly that to be a hot debate at the National Assembly, at the, um, at the Senate this morning when they resume. 
Okay, so you, like you said, um, padding is not new anymore. But why is, why is it that for every time they bring a budget, there's always this padding? Because um, if you say this is how much we want to spend, um, I'm wondering why you come back again and then there's more money on top. I understand maybe inflation can be a part of it, but why is this now a recurring thing in Nigeria that every time a budget you know, is being placed, there's also another money that is going to come on top when next they meet. You know, the function of the legislature is almost divided into a two or three. One is the issue of legislation, passing up, um, uh, 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 making laws um, for the country. Two is what we call the oversight function. And the oversight function of the legislature uh, has to do with the executive. Part of the oversight function is also to be able to pass the budget. If you, you press the executive as it were, either at the state level, local government level, or the federal level, send um, their budget, estimated budget, it's always an estimated budget, send it to the legislator. This legislator will have the power to look through it and be able to either reduce or increase. It's within them. It's, it's the power that has been given them. That power has been enshrined in the ninth constitution as amended, so they can do and do best. As it do, most of them, most often they are not selfishly. They try to also manipulate some of those things and trying to insert certain things that also favor them. They also go through the back door to be able to stay here and twist the executive to also add something, some things uh, of office um, to the budget. As it were, not only that, during the different for each parastasia ministry and MDAs also have come before the legislators to also defend their own budget. During the of that, also some under current. Uh, on the table, uh, it is within them. But the fact is that um, if there's any undercurrent and trying to smuggle certain things into the budget, um, then it becomes a problem. But for me, uh, with, with, with all sincerity, yes, in as much as some of these things have been you can also see that in the course of their duty, most of the time, they also be able to look at the instances where they have also detected. Um, 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 some uh, discrepancies on the part of executives or ministries and um, where they have to uh, put in certain things which the legislators will find out and so expunge. Then there are instances also where they will say, no, we don't want this money to go for this. Let's take it away from this and put it in this. It is part of the oversight function that in Nigeria, anything can happen just like Charlie Boy. As I always say, Charlie Boy should, Charlie Boy should, anything can happen. <laughs> okay, another headline here is um, about the Nigeria uh, airports terrorism un begins lagos abuja airports security audit uh, un that's the watch word for me un begins the lagos abuja airport security audit i wonder what your take is i don't know who the un is but there's a, a there's an international um organization in charge of um, aviation across the globe i know of ita and of, of akao as it is and um, so I, I don't know this particular one that U.S. What power does the U.S. UN, have to? UN, UN, United yes, Nations. Sorry, sorry, UN, yes. Yes, then if it's UN, then maybe the UN agencies, as I said, um, they are worldwide, as, as I said, that's ATA, that's IATA, and you call ATA, that's ACAO. So if the agencies um, within the UN or the international, they, yeah, they have the right. They do, they do that often, not only Nigeria, but all other airports in the world, because Airport security is very, very fundamental. Uh, as I said, I'm in Abuja. I passed through the airport. And um, the, um, after the 9-11 incident that um, rocked the United States of America, remember really what happened in 9-11? We had some, uh, some terrorists uh, ran into the Twin Towers in, in, in the United States, and over 5,000 lives were lost. Uh, airport security has been, up, uh, have, have been taken to the next level. So. Um, mostly why they do all those audits and make sure that they meet in because not only Nigerians that are passing through those airports, people coming from across the globe also passes through that. Um, from what the what I've seen of the uh, airport, or airport for now, from a layman, I don't think it's a bad one. Um, security is good. Um, the more, if, if, to me, if, even they've taken it to the next step, I don't know whether you have seen the new uh, Matala Mohammed. International Airport, the new one, the what you call the new, the new airport, which is just being put into use. I used that about two months ago, as a month ago, when I went for Afcon. That is an international airport. 
that airport can meet anyone I've said. I've been to New York, I've been to London, I've been to Canada, I've been everywhere. I've said that that airport is one of the best I've seen in any part of the world, if we can only but maintain it. Although uh, it has not started full operation, it's just about two or three, four airlines that has to that. I don't know where we have not moved all the international FM airlines from the old domestic uh, Matala Mohammed Airport to Disney. It is seamless. Everything is automated, and that is the way to go. Mm, that's good news to hear about something that is in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. you, asked, you asked me whether I have I've seen it. I was like, airports now give me a running stomach. Because when you when you think about the fares, you're yeah, like, eh, what? Which are they go find yeah, for the? <laughs> it, you know, it will give you a running stomach because when you just do a one one way flight from mm. Abuja and it's costing one hundred and fifty four thousand naira, then you can do, you can do the maths. Mm. Mm. One fifty four one way, not two ways, not return. <laughs> Okay, this worries someone before we move to the next paper. Unpaid salaries. Sanu Nasu tackle federal government declare seven day strike. Our children they don't, don't come remain for school with that. They don't come they don't come again. They don't start. Because that that will not be news again now. Asu Sanu. It's always by the time Sanu drop their um, own, then Asu will take over. But the fact is that I always say time and time again. The problem is that our government don't uh, they don't uh, live up to agreement. We have an agreement with union, you know, they don't live up to it. It's an agreement, it's only very a contract as we say in law. Uh is a, a valid contract as we say in law. It's a contract that is signed, sealed, and delivered. And what is done, what that is done, you are you are you are bound you are, you are bound by that uh, the, uh, the contract uh, contract. So if the government had an agreement with the unions and then all then oh, well and good. What we're going to see now is that you are going to see another crisis within the um public uh, public institution, public universities as it were. And that is why you see that 80, close to 80% or 70% of parents no longer send their children to public uh, universities. You can, you can hardly see anybody say, I, I don't know, people go, but you can hardly see people sending their, uh, their children to public because the issue is that you know when they'll enter, but when they will graduate, you don't know. Um, you see them, um, a student staying about four, six years for four year course. When their mates who went to the, who attended the primary university, I just make sure that they clock out within four years. And that has been the bane of um, Nigerian investors. I hope that the government will listen to them and get this thing in the board before it's now stumbled into a full-fledged um, strike, as it were. Mm. Mm. All right, let's move over to The Guardian. Um, there's a small headline that says, Open borders to address food crisis, Kanu gov Governor tells Tinubu. And there's another one that says, Tinubu promises to fix farmers' herders' crisis in three weeks. Um, do you think this can happen in three weeks? And do you think opening up the borders um, would actually address the food crisis in Nigeria? What do you think? I want to believe that the president is, uh, is misquoted, as it were. You know, every any time they drop the ball, the next thing they were accused of um, the media of misquoting the president. I don't know where he's getting his uh, where he's getting his information from. That was how some people came in the past, uh, uh, service chiefs, and said that Boko Haram terrorism would be eliminated within one month. And we saw what happened until they left office. They couldn't do that. I don't think this is time to start putting a timeline to issues like this. If the president is going to get the issues solved, then we should get his necessary his um, aid to do the need uh, the needful and walk the talk. Not giving time pay. after three weeks. If nothing happened, then what what happened? We are having a high rise in insecurity across Nigeria now, especially within the north. We've seen the situation where students have been kidnapped about 200 at a point at another uh, with about another system. We saw in Bono where over 200 women were also picked by bandits, um, people that were in the IDP camp who were displaced in their homes by insecurity. They find their way to IDP camp. They went out to search for food or whatever they said it was, and they've been um, and um, uh, they've been uh, kidnapped and abducted. Now we are hearing news that. Um, the bandits are asking for six forty trillion naira and um, one hundred and fifty motorcycles to be able to release them. This is not this is not good news. This is not good news for us. And um, I, I don't sincerely I don't know what is going on. Especially the issue of kidnapping of Putin. This is bringing us back to the pre twenty fifteen. You remember what happened in Chibok? Yeah. How the Chibok guests were all picked up during the Jonathan uh, regime? You remember what happened in Dapchi? Where school boys were picked, most of those students that were abducted, going to about nine years to ten years now, some of them have not returned and may not return again. Now this set of students have been picked. 
I think we are, I think the government should be able to tighten security and look at ways of um, being able to deal with this issue of insecurity, especially the, among the vulnerable ones, because the children, children and women are the most vulnerable when it comes to security. They cannot defend themselves. As much. How can you send your children to school only for them to park, be parked by bandits? And I ask, how do they come into a community and pick over 200? Do you know what it takes to be able to um, um, uh, to kidnap over 200 students and they are much like that and march into the bush or whatever and there was no single presence of security nobody to intervene, nobody to challenge them it leaves more to be desired but as I said, we seem to be going back to the um, pre-2015 uh, uh, days of good Lord Jonathan and I'm asking is, are we, is there any political undertone to this it's my personal opinion is there any political? Yes, there was some level of kidnapping during the Buhari, eight years of Buhari. But it wasn't in this manner. What is happening now is what happened during Good Lord Jonathan. And it seems like some people are trying to rewrite the script. That's my personal opinion. Mm. Okay, uh, let's move to the Daily Trust. Uh, there are interesting uh, headlines here. Small headlines up from the top left. We are starting with um, hardship. There's nothing much anyone can do. Buhari. And that's what Buhari said. So I don't know what your take is. We should forget that man. We should just forget that man. I've said it time and time and time on this and other front that Buhari remains the worst president Nigeria ever had. And I start to be correct. He is. Because most of the problem we find ourselves was caused by Buhari. And he just left us in Nepal and we are reaping the fruit. Um, for he, this was a man that came into office with so much goodwill. Nigerians voted for him. One, believing that he'll be able to send the level of his second in land, being a former um, military military leader or a military man, he failed woefully. In the economy, he left everything in that task. In infrastructure, nothing. And his age will continue to, uh, to charge him on and writing all sorts of books for people to read. But even the current government is now blaming Paris for most of the misfortune that uh, they found. And, um, and the problem they are facing it has been said time and time again by the age of the, this current president. So the man should just go to his uh, daughter and enjoy himself and whatever is left of his service. But for me, should not be listened to. If he has any honor by now, I think that in other times, someone like Buhari would have been arrested and be asked to, um, uh, to come and account for some of the deeds, both his own deed and that of his aide, by saying that there's nothing that, that is a defeatist uh, attitude which he exhibited when he was in government. That is, if you, then if you are saying that there's nothing the government can do, but then the government should resign and we look for people that can be able to do the job. When the president was taking over office, he said he knows the enormity of the problem and that he's going to try to tackle them and he will tackle them uh, that we should give him some time. Yeah, we'll give him some time. It's nine months already that we're going to wait for eternity. They say it will get to us before it gets better. But why it gets worse, some of us have to die um, before it gets better. When you pick up, when you, when you inherit a company or you buy a company, you buy both assets and liabilities. So the assets are there, the liabilities are, and the, the current government should be able to. And not of forget, we are talking of a government, APC government. For for eight years, they were blaming uh, PDP for the for the problem that beheaded Nigeria uh, for 16 years. APC have been in the saddle for nine years, now going to 10 years. Who are they going to blame? Nobody. So uh, I don't think Buhari. It's me and you. Me and you. <laughs> me and you that will pay the, the the monies we are owing and all that. No, no. So no you are you know, as I don't tell you that. I know you would say that. <laughs> but you know, uh, this one worries me. This headline worries me. It's like we're going back to the days of uh, Ruga. But briefly, just let's be brief about our answers. Provide land for grazing. Tinubu tells governors. And I, I don't know what you feel about that. Uh, I know the last time this kind of a thing came up, there was a lot of uproar in communities around, around the, the country. And now the president is directing that every state governor should provide land for grazing for people. The question that was, was up on everybody's lips then was that uh, to rear cattle or any other form of livestock. It's a business like any other business. So are you telling me that governors will have to provide shops for everybody who is mm. uh, doing a business or something? Why would it be that you come into my state, I must provide land for you, for your cattle to graze and all that, and you're not, you're not doing it like it, it is a business. You're doing it like it is a right. Is this not what is coming back to us now, Ruga? 
Yeah, it is. And uh, man shall not live by bread alone. Let me say use the word. Man shall not live by meat alone. We have the option of eating fish mm -hmm. and eating chicken. So it, it doesn't have to be, it's not composed out. Some people don't eat meat. I'm sure you are aware of that. Mm -hmm. There are some people that are vegetarians and they're living fine. It, as you rightly said, Ruka, um, uh, cattle rearing is a private business. Anybody that wants, um, that wants land or whatever to raise should go and buy. Just as if I want to build a house, I have to go and buy. If I want to farm, one, I don't have it. Well, for even to talk of it, we are the land. In my own states, which you know very well, we, are we have small land now. You know, even reach us. So which one are we going to get? I'm sure your own states too. You don't have enough. Mm -hmm. So um, the president, uh, the, even the northern governors at the point that said oh, they are going to put, provide uh, land for Ruka. How many of them provided it? I think the president should focus on all that. That's anybody who wants to do this. Better. Funny enough, I... If you go around Abuja, I was driving through the airport there, you could see you, you could see the whole place taken over by cows. Most of the places you see cows in the city, main city of Abuja, not even the asket. And you ask yourself, most of those guys that you see uh, uh, um, going around with cows, they are not the owners. The owners are multi-millionaires that stay somewhere and just hand over those cows to some young people to be going around and they are paying them. The fact remains that for some state they've said never. Look, because when is the, the fear, is, let me talk about the status. The fear in the south is that, for, for example, is that once we give um, some of these uh, guys an inch, they use the opportunity to come. And we've seen the level of destruction and killings that has happened between the Fulani headers and farmers. The same president that said that they should give land is the same person that said within three weeks going to settle the problem between headers and farmers. Did he ask himself a question, why is it that the farmers are always have at loggerheads? With others because they go around using their cows to destroy people's crops and that has always been the case. so if anybody is into if i'm into yam if farming or cassava would the president would the government give me land to farm mm -hmm. if i'm into put would they give me if they're into other things mm -hmm. they, is it only is it only ram that people are going to, no, no, i totally disagree with that mm -hmm. and i i know that is basically just talking right. uh his is he, what the statement is advisory it's not composed it's not binding on it mm -hmm. Anyways, um, there's another headline on The Nation that says, Tinubu to governors, pay wage award to your workers. Um, I wish we could even take this, but sadly we don't have enough time and we have to wrap it up. But there's just been the issue of the wage award. So some states are owing, um, and NLC you know, is calling for a higher fee now for the wage award. And there's just a lot. And I think we'll talk about it when next year on the show. Anyways, we want to say thank you um, for coming and reviewing the papers with us. Okay. Uh, we are just saying we are just saying thank you for talking to thank us you. from the seat of power. Oh, okay, yeah, thank from you. the seat of oh, power, we have to add. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, have a, I hope your fasting is learned too. Okay. Okay, sir. We've thank been fasting so since, not just now. Don't worry. Okay. Thank you. Have a wonderful day ahead. You, you too. too. You too. All right, we've been speaking with Chris Kenyide Wando. He's a member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK and he was joining us from Abuja. We'll go on a short break and when we return, we'll be looking at our hot topic. Please stay with us. <laughs>